Hello dolls, it's me, Babs, your favorite stenographer. I am a certified OBGYN stenographer and I've been doing this for seven years. When I was a student, I didn't watch YouTube the way that I do now. And I don't think that there were many videos like the ones that I make available to me back then. So I created this channel not only to share some funny personal stories, which I love to do, please check out my recent upload, My Ex is Gay, but to share my knowledge and experience regarding ultrasound and OBGYN ultrasound. I hope to enlighten future sonographers and help them on their professional journey. Please check me out on Instagram. I will leave the link down below. You could DM me if you have any ultrasound questions, any concerns, and I would be more than happy to help you out in any way that I can. Now let's get on with the video. All right, so you guys want to make money. Everybody wants to make money. Everybody wants to get hired right away and make top dollar. But guess what? That ain't gonna happen. Not as a freshly graduate of ultrasound. It's just not gonna happen. But over time, you could advance in your career. And I'm gonna tell you how. I'm gonna make this video into two parts. Today, I'm just gonna talk about small clinics. And the next video, once I do more research, I'm going to talk about positions that are available to you in a hospital. First, you want to decide should you get a bachelor degree or an associates? You may not think that this is important now. And in reality, when first getting hired, it's not important whether you have a bachelor's or an associates. What you make, it's not going to depend on your degree. It's going to depend on you passing the ARDMS exam and your experience. I have an associate. I never got my bachelor's. And I'm making pretty decent money. So I would suggest just for the future, it may not happen. It may not be something that you want to do, but if this is something that you want, if you want to advance in your career and possibly not even do ultrasound anymore and become a manager, you may want to consider getting a bachelor's. Just, just consider it. If you don't have it, it's okay. Don't stress yourself. Don't say, Oh my God, Bad told me that I'm not gonna progress unless I have a bachelor's degree. Oh my God, like, what am I gonna do? I haven't been in school, like, in so long. Or I just got my bat, my associates, and I just, I just don't wanna do this. Like, don't worry about it. Like, don't worry. This is for people who, let's say, already have a bachelor's or are getting into it right now. So it's very easy for you to switch it up. Don't worry about it. Don't stress yourself, please. When you're working in a small clinic, moving up is kind of limited. Your boss isn't really going to give you a lot of money because it is a small clinic and there aren't many positions for you. However, depending on where you work, and how long you've been there because honestly all of my tips and everything that I'm gonna tell you is more for people who have been doing it for a while so you're not gonna get these opportunities right away you're gonna have to earn your keep you're gonna have to gain some experience and what's that term that people say a lot I forgot the term but when it comes up in my head I'll put it somewhere because that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, you're gonna have to gain some experience, have some years under your belt before you could have the opportunities, you know, for these opportunities, before you have the chance for these opportunities. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. So like I said, this may or may not happen, but if you're lucky enough and if you're buddy-buddy with the owner and you're doing really well, maybe a position could be created for you. This is kind of combined with some of the other things that I'm going to say in a couple minutes, but maybe you're good at something in particular and a position is created just for you. For instance, maybe everyone is overworked, the place is overbooked, and you become like the person who just helps out. You become like the floater. 
basically. Now, there are positions just for a floater for uh, entry level positions, but this is something specific. This is something special. This is for someone who has been around for a while and you're just helping to ease the load or something like that. Now, I'm just making this up. I'm not sure if this is something that would happen, but it could happen in a small clinic because in a small clinic, there's more freedom to be creative. Another thing that you could become or another position that could be available to you is a head tech. Yes, you would be the head person that people go to for everything. Now, this is different than a ultrasound manager, which I'm gonna get to, but the head tech would be someone who would make slightly more money, not a lot more money, just slightly more money possibly, and it would definitely look good in your resume. You would be close to a manager, but without the pay and without all of the responsibilities. Deter, deterred, okay. The third position that you could get, now this is when the bachelor degree kind of plays a good and an, an important part, maybe in a small clinic, probably definitely in a hospital, but a manager position gets more money, obviously, more responsibilities, you will have to deal with obviously the um, uh, the text underneath you. You won't be scanning. You would only scan if it's uh, crowded. If it's um, for some reason today, I'm like not uh, my words are not coming to me. But if it's crazy busy, you would be helping out. But normally you wouldn't. You would be in charge of hiring, of firing possibly giving a raise but you would have to talk to the boss you know get it okay but you could possibly um you know give people raises and you would have to handle like the supplies unless there's an office manager then maybe the office manager would be in charge of that and of course my favorite if there's a patient complaint or an issue you would be the one that would have to resolve it. So just think about that. Now, here is the nitty gritty. If you become specialized in a field or in a, not in a field, if you become certified in a specialty that no one else in the practice can do, then things might work in your favor money-wise. So let's say, you work in a general imaging clinic type of place. Like they do everything, breast, abdomen, maybe babies, vascular, and let's say no one there can do an echocardiogram. No one else there can scan a person's heart. So they hire you and you would be the only one doing it. So no one else can replace you, basically. So you might be making the money. When I worked at my old shitty shitty job, everyone there, all of the techs did OB. We only did obstetrics ultrasound, not GYN. That was very rare. And nobody there really knew how to do fetal echo. Now, now we all knew how to scan the heart but to be specialized in the fetal heart, that was something different. And a woman would come in once a week and she would take a room and scan for a few hours. Now, I don't know how much she got paid, but she most likely got paid more than all of us. So you could either get paid per patient or per hour. I think she got paid per patient. Now there are pros and cons to all of that, but because everyone was scheduled specifically for her, I would imagine it was per patient for her because if there weren't any patients there for her to scan, 
why would she stick around? And if she was done with all her patients, she would leave. There'd be no reason for her to stay. So I would imagine, I, I guess it was per patient. With that, you could either do part-time or you could do full-time. You could be hired by different places or you could be hired just in one place. It really depends on your situation and if you could afford just to work part-time at one place or etc. It really depends on what you want. Like if you're going to do something like that, that's all on you. You're in charge. But it only really works if you're certified in something that no one else can do. So my advice is in order to be the top notch top sonographer one if you want if you haven't decided if you're going to go for associates or a bachelor go for a bachelor because down the line there might be more opportunities for you also become certified in a specialty that not a lot of people are doing and that could be vascular fetal echograms, fetal echo, sorry, fetal echocardiograms, or just regular like adult echocardiogram. And think about a managerial position later on. It looks good in your resume. It um, gets you more money and you scan less, which down the line, it might be something that you would consider because working as a sonographer every single day or, you know, Full, as, as a full-time sonographer, you're going to wear down like the connective tissues and the muscles and you're just going to injure yourself, basically. Carpal tunnel, uh, pain here, sometimes on the left side too. Uh, you know, neck, back, shoulder, wrist, hands. Like it's it's going to be a problem for you down the line. So you might want to consider a position that allows you to scan less. You will have more responsibilities, but it comes with more money. So just think about it. You want to become inexpensive. You want to become someone who knows their shit and no one else can replace. They can't replace you. You are it. So they got to give you the top dollar or they got to give you that position. But with all of this, it comes with time. Don't rush it and don't stress yourself if you're not there because it will come. If I left anything, I'll leave it down in the description box down below. If there are any questions that uh, I haven't answered, please leave them down below. Like my video, please. Check out my other videos, especially my story times if you're interested because I have some really cool story times. And I'm working on other ultrasound videos which I hope you really like. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!